This is an aloe vera plant. Very useful plant. You can use the uh, the stuff in it on put it on burns and things. People also like to use it in the sauna. We haven't had a lot of this, uh, but Alicia brought up a couple extra plants. What's exciting about this one is that it's flowered. Now I've never seen an aloe vera plant flower, so this is my first time. Look at these pretty flowers. Apparently these are edible, although we tried one and it wasn't really that great. Uh, I'm more interested in the seeds. In here, there's little black seeds. Now most people would not grow this from seed. What they would do is wait for little suckers or, or baby plants to come off the side and collect those. But those are all going to be genetic clones, kind of like twins. They're all going to be the same genetic code. We actually don't want that. We want genetic diversity in our plants. What's happened historically is that people have selected the best of a plant and then they've reproduced it uh, by cloning or by cuttings or things like that. And so we have all these plants out there, but we only have one set of genetic code for all of them. That's actually not good because if we have a more diversified genome, then it's uh, less likely that a disease could come and wipe them all out. If you're interested in that topic, you should study Cavendish bananas, which were originally a mutant, that's why they have no seeds, and we're actually in danger of losing one of the most valuable bananas that we have because the Cavendish are so popular. Anyway, so in this case, even though it's a lot more work, we want to collect the seeds, and we want to raise these from seed, and then put those together and cross them again and raise them from seed and we might get different looking flowers, we might get different properties in the plant and then we're getting this diversified genome that's really much better for everybody long term. 